I'm Dr. Beth Rappaport from Mount Sinai Medical Center. This instructional video will review the indications, contraindications, techniques, and potential complications in performing a lumbar puncture. A lumbar puncture is performed for either diagnostic or therapeutic purposes. The needle should be inserted into the interspace between L3 and L4 or L4 and L5 as the spinal cord terminates at L1 or L2. To prepare the patient, clean the patient's back using antiseptic solution on the swabs, starting from the insertion site and making expanding concentric circles. This should be done three times. Insert the spinal needle such that the bevel is in the plane of the longitudinal fibers of the dura. The needle should be turned so that the bevel will be towards the patient's side. Angle the needle toward the umbilicus, which is approximately 15 degrees toward the head. Use a slow, steady force to pass the needle through the tissue layers. Once you have CSF, remove the stylet and attach the manometer to obtain an opening pressure. Open the stopcock valve toward the manometer. To obtain an accurate measurement, instruct the patient to carefully extend their legs fully and relax. Once the column of fluid stops rising and the measurement is noted, rotate the stopcock valve to allow the CSF in the manometer to drip into the first collection tube, which should be held beneath the manometer to catch the CSF that will be initially expelled from the device. Detach and set aside the manometer and allow the fluid to drip directly into each tube. Collect fluid in each of the four tubes, at least three to four cc's in each tube, unless cytology is indicated, in which case at least five cc's is required for best results. Once you collect an adequate specimen, replace the stylet and withdraw the needle. Hold pressure with a piece of gauze for a minute, longer if there's any bleeding at the insertion site. 